Hi dear students to my channel Mathematics Made Easy. This is Ms. Ruchika welcoming you to today's session. Today's session is exclusive for grade 9 elite math students and it's a must watch video because it is covering the exam coverage part 2. So welcome to the video and in today's video we are going to focus on factorization. I have taken questions from the exam of term end coverage page 657, 666, 671 and 679. So the questions that you see on this learning objective as per your scheme of work will be covered in today's video. So watch the video till the end. Solve the questions with me and some questions which I give you for trying do solve them. I will not be able to solve all the questions in front of you in the video because then the video will become very very long and it will be difficult to upload on the channel. So I will be solving the difficult and important questions. Remaining question you will solve using the same technique. So let's dive into the video and a humble reminder if you find my video useful and you watch them regularly do subscribe to the channel so that it works as a motivation for me to make more videos and also you cannot miss if you press the bell icon the upcoming videos which will be uploaded daily now till your exam time so the first questions that we are taking on this slide are based on the learning objective of factorization of polynomials using distributive property and using the method of grouping. So first question is choose a value Q so that this 1, 2, 3, 4. So it has four terms, four termed polynomial can be factorized by grouping and then you have to do the factorization. Now if you look at the terms, these two terms can be combined together and these two can be grouped together. So we are working on grouping. So let's see what is the common factor. So 7 and 21. 7 is the common factor. You are left with x minus 3. Now here we don't know the value of q. But what we know is that when we are doing by this method of factorization of grouping, the bracket will be same. The term will be same. So that means x minus 3 is going to come in the, sec in the first bracket also. Now the first term 2x square means 2 will definitely come. And you need x square. x is inside so 1x is going to come. So that means this is the correct factorization of the question. And if you go on factorizing, then you can combine 2x plus 7 together and x minus 3. So we have factored the expression nicely. Now we'll have to select the value of q. So for that, I'll change color. It means if you just open this part, 2x square minus 6x. So what is the value of your q? Now you can compare. Q is minus 6. So this is the first part, value of Q, and the second part, factorization. Now let's apply the same technique, factorization by grouping and distributive property to this polynomial. So here there are only two terms. It's an easy question. Look at 12, look at 16, select the GCF, greatest common factor, which is 4, Take it common, look at a square, a square. Both are same, so a square will be common. b square and b cube, so only b square will be common. So what is left in the bracket? Negative sign will be as it is. 3 times uh, 3 minus 4 times b. So have we done the factorization? Yes, we have got the two factors of the quadratic of this polynomial, which are this. So first factor is 4a square b square and the second factor is 3 minus 4b. I hope you understand how I'm factoring by taking the common factor out. So this slide is on that learning objective. Okay, so let's solve some questions now. Here we are going to use the method of middle term splitting. So first I'm going to explain the concept to you and then we'll solve some questions. So the concept of middle term splitting involves the coefficient of x or b. So you will have to find two roots, say a plus b, such that the sum is the middle term, 17, which is the coefficient of x. And the product of those two numbers has to be the value of c, last term. Okay, so think about those two numbers and let's then write the pattern for other two. a plus b, the sum is equal to the middle term 8 and the product is equal to 
minus 48 in a similar way. Now here a plus b. Now you need to be careful. See it is not given in standard form. So first you write it in standard form and then you compare so that you don't do any mistake. So the middle term has to be 15 and the product has to be 44. In a similar way write this in standard form first and then sum is minus 5 product is minus 24. So keep thinking about these numbers. Let's write the pattern for all of them. Middle term negative 17. Product is 72. Middle term minus 2. Product is minus 35. Again not in standard form so con convert to standard form and then do the middle term splitting. Similarly for the last one. So you'll have to think about these numbers and the best way to do that is to factor the value of C. So if you look here, C is 42. So which two numbers which when multiplied gives you 42 and which when added gives you 17. That's how you think. So let's see does 3 and 14 work for us. Multiply and check. 14 multiplied with 3 is 42 and when we add them it is 17 so yes the factors are going to be x plus 3 x plus 14. Similarly look here look at the factors of minus 48 so the number minus 12 and 4 if you make it plus here and minus does it work 12 multiplied with negative 4 48 12 plus negative 4 8 yes they work so x plus 12 x minus 4. Similarly next one x plus 11 x plus 4. Which two numbers of factors of 12 will work here? Let's see. Okay so let's look at negative 8 and 3. So yes they work. So x minus 8 x plus 3. Similarly for the other ones also you can do the same. So m minus 7 m plus 6 is the answer here for this one m plus 20 and now 20 has to be with a negative sign because you need negative here and m minus 2 okay so does that work let's check multiply 20 with minus 2 you are getting negative okay we don't want that so that means the sign has to be changed so this will be m minus 20 because minus 20 and minus 2 when added gives you this and when subtracted so that's correct similarly here n minus 7 and n plus 5 let us see do they work yes they do work perfectly so those are the factors and last but not the least is this one two numbers which when multiplied gives you 72 which when added gives you negative 17 Okay, so they can be 9 and 8 with a negative sign. So y minus 9, y minus 8. They work perfectly well. So these are the factorization using middle term splitting where we have done the factorization for leading coefficient 1. Okay, so let's solve this question again by middle term splitting. But here the only difference is that for some question there will be no real root. So you'll have to check your discriminant which is given by the formula b square minus 4ac. So if discriminant is less than 0, it means no real roots. And that is the case that is going to happen for question 11, also for question 16. So let me explain that to you. So D is B square minus 4AC. So B is minus 6. Let's put the value to the calculation. Minus 4, A times A is 1. C is 17. So when you do that calculation, this is 36 minus 68, which is negative. So because it is negative, there cannot be any real root. So we cannot find solution. For this, it is no solution. Exactly same process is here where you do b square minus 4ac and it comes out to be b is the value of coefficient of c so 4 times a times 1. So this is negative and because it is less than 0 no real roots or no solution. So 
you will have to check that for some of the equations given here for others middle term splitting will work so you need two roots sum is 8 product is 12 so definitely easy numbers t plus 6 and t plus 2 because when you add 6 plus 2 you get 8 when you multiply you get 12 let's see this one question 15 so you need two roots sum is 9 product is 18 so very very easy 6 and 3 is going to work for you so these are the two roots next we look at this one you need two roots where product is 20 sum is 9 so again p plus 5 and p plus 4 are the two roots very very easy in a similar way let's do for this one so you need two roots sum is 7 product is 12. So what can be those two roots? Yes, you are right, 4 and 3, so n plus 4, n plus 3. Check the discriminant for this and this also and try to do the middle term splitting. The same method is going to work for these two questions. So now we do some questions from page 6, 7, 9 of your math book. Learning objective is factor trinomials that are perfect square. So that means I'm going to use the perfect square identity. So let's write the identity first that is going to help us. It is called difference of squares. We have done it many times in class. So difference means subtraction of two things. Square means it will have square terms. So when you have something like this, difference of squares, it can be written as a plus b multiplied with a minus b. So this can be used for factorization. So let's see the expression which is given here. First we need to check, is it perfect square? Yes, 9a square is perfect square of 3a. I can write like this. And 4b square is the perfect square of 2b. I can write like this. So definitely I can apply difference of square to do the factorization. And that's what the question is asking for. So you take the first term, plus second term and then first term minus second term. Now some of you have asked me this question, is this correct or the other one? So both are correct. You may change the order also. If you write negative first and then positive, it is not wrong. The answer is still correct. Let's look at this one now, factorization. So again, it is a perfect square, x square minus 5 square. So you can apply difference of square. So answer is this or change the order this way. okay now sometimes word problem comes very important so how will you do it let's read marvin saw a rug in a store that you'd like to purchase it is an area represented by the expression shown on the rug so this is the area so you have to first factor the expression that represents area so if a is x square minus 16 x plus 64 we need to do its factorization again we are going to take the help of algebra so the identity i'm going to use here will be difference and the square so this is a perfect square identity it gives you a square minus 2ab plus b square again you can also write this as a square plus b square minus 2ab both are correct so is this a perfect square yes 64 is a perfect square you can write it as 8 square minus 2 times x times 8 so is it matching the pattern yes so i can use this identity for act factorization so the factorization would be x minus 8 whole square why minus because the middle term had a negative sign so x minus 8 whole square can be written as x minus 8 times x minus 8 so factor the expression that represents the area of the rug is done now if you see this rug looks like in a shape of a rectangle uh, in the shape of a square also it is written that length and width he remembers that they were the same and that is what you see here so what do the factors in the factored expression represent since both of them are same it means that length is equal to width is equal to x minus 8 and that the shape of the rug is a square so it's a square rug end of today's session hope you found the video useful and if you did please 
give it a thumbs up like the video and share it with your friends who are also giving the exam subscribe to the channel so as not to miss any important video coming up for your next video is end of term coverage part 3 where we are going to cover module 12 quadratic function so stay glued to the channel and press the bell icon not to miss any notification of upcoming video. Until then, this is Ms. Ruchika signing off from today's session. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.